Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink and a little late on these cards. I actually started creating them on Canada Day. I was sitting here and everyone's posting, you know, maple leaf themed things and happy Canada Day and all that stuff. And I remembered I had got this neat and tangled Beavers A stamp set. I was like, this is perfect. So I pulled it out, got some Copic, um, friendly cards like here. This is Nina Classic Crest 80 pound cardstock. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half piece that I just had in my little like scrap file. And I managed to fit all the images from the set onto it. So I'm using my Tim Holtz travel stamp platform here and Ink on Threes Blackout Ink, which is a Copic friendly ink. And because these are brand new stamps, I'm going to ink them up a few times to make sure I get a perfect impression of all of them. So once they're all stamped onto the cardstock, I can start coloring these in with my Copic markers. So I started with the beavers bodies and did them all the same color because that's consistent and it's easy. So I used kind of, I call these like neutral browns. They're almost like a gray brown in a way. And working from darkest to lightest because that's just my habit with most Copa coloring anyway. And my other habit is generally, I basically picture my light source to be coming from the upper right. But I've said this in other videos, while I somewhat follow light sources at the same times, I will break those rules and just put darker areas where I just feel like I want to put them. So... I started with the darkest and then just work my way out to the lightest by um, pulling that color kind of further and further out. And for their little, the ones that you can kind of see their little tummy areas, um, I just omitted the E47 and just used the lighter shades just to give it that little bit of um, definition. So just doing my little small circular motions and going along and doing all of the same areas. So all of the bodies of all of the beavers at once. That also helps kind of speed up the coloring process so that I'm not jumping back and forth, like doing one full image and then going to the next full image, etc., etc. So I'm going to color in all these little beavers and then for their tails, I'm sticking to the same colors, but I just, I'm going to pull in E49, which is a lot darker, and I'm going to use just the E49 and just the E44 for their tails because that's going to give it, you know, that nice dark look for beavers. So, really fun. These images are just, they're so cute. They're so cute. I love it. And I love that this, like, the sentiment is called Beavers A because, yes, we Canadians do say A a lot. So, anyway. Um, I added R22 and R20 for their little, for their cheeks was just the R20. For their ears, I did little dabs of the R22 and then the R20. And then I'm going and doing their tails, like I said, with the E49 and the E47. And I'm also using that for their noses. I was going to do their noses black, aka really dark grays, but I thought I might as well use these dark browns because it makes things, again, more consistent. So pulled that in and then got all of that colored. And then for the like pinks and reds, I'm just going to first, I'm going, I'm like jumping ahead of myself, um, warm grays for this little mouse that she's hugging. It's W5, W3 and W1. And then um, for the wood areas, I'm using different shades of brown just to kind of, you know, make that little bit of a definition between the little beavers and the wood here. And again, working from lightest to darkest. For this heart that he's, you know, chewed out, um, I purposely want it to be streaky because I, you know, it would have all of that texture and whatnot from him chewing on it to make it that shape. So I just kind of slap on the color for those areas, just letting it be um, streaky. And then for the rest of the wood, I kind of smooth out a little bit, but then I go back in with the darker colors and add a bit more lines because again, it's like branches and um, logs and whatnot. So I go back in, add a bit more of that just to give it that little bit of texture and then add some more to the like chewed areas of that heart to make it, you know, give it that more texture, give it that more streaky definition. So I keep going kind of back and forth on it till I'm happy with it. And then for the reds, I'm using the R20 and R22 again, but then I also pull in some R24 just to deepen it up a bit, do her little skirt and that little heart, her little bow and the flower. And then once I have those, I decided to go with blues for all these other little boy beavers shorts. 
Just again, simplicity by doing them all the same color. I don't use blues very often. That's something I used to get asked a lot, especially on my very, like my ancient um, favorite Copic markers video that I did. Oh gosh, like 10 years. However, it was years and years and years ago. Um, I never recommended blues in that video. And at the time it was like, I rarely pull, like, and even now I don't use blue very often. I don't know why. That's one of my favorite colors. And yet it's not something I reach for very often when I'm coloring. So did blues for the shorts yellow for little bird. I did color in the little fish, but didn't end up using it on these cards, but colored him win with little, little bits of orange. And then I used BG 10 just to add a little tiny bit of color to the bottom of her little skirt there. And then I used my colorless blender to fix up any areas where I went outside the lines. And I also used to add a, um, to push the color around a little bit on the area of that heart that he chewed just to give it that definition. And then as my final bit of, you know, texture and highlight, I'm using my Jelly Roll pen, the wide one here, to add highlights and little dots, like polka dots to her skirt, etc. And then, of course, I added, like, big highlights to their tails. And then once I'm done adding all of those highlights and everything, these images are complete. And I'm going to use the coordinating dies to um, tape into place with some washi tape, making sure everything is very well taped before I run this through my machine and die cut all these images in one pass. So I've got everything taped. I can run it through my die cut machine. And then I decided for all of my card bases, I'm using Nina Classic Crest 110 pound cardstock now. So this is a heavier weight. Really like this one for card bases. And I pulled out the Tree Duo stencils from Neat and Tangled. And I'm gonna use three different shades of green of Distress Inks to sponge over these stencils. And funny thing is, is I only filmed this one and then I did the other three cards, but um, I didn't film the other ones, but I found it's actually easier to work from the top down. So just FYI, if you're using these stencils and you wanna do a background similar to this, start at the top and work your way down. It's easier to kind of line things up and not have to do as much fiddling. I ended up, you know, I'm masking off different trees and different areas. And this one took me the longest. And then I discovered when I did the rest of the cards that if I started at the top of the card and worked my way down, it was a lot easier to just move the stencils around. There's two stencils in this pack and it was just a lot faster and a lot quicker to just line the stencils up, sponge on the color and go. So yeah, and of course I didn't film it, but do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> so here, this is what I'm talking about. So I'm having to like kind of mask off some of the trees. I'm just using the purple tape for this because it's a nice low tack. And I just move the stencil around, sponge on the color. I, if I add ink to the sponge, I rub it off on the scrap paper there so it's not as harsh because I just want a nice light covering of all these trees. I don't want it, you know, super intense because this is just the card base. It's the background. And I used um, pine needle ink, uh, mowed lawn, and peeled paint and just went along and filled in these backgrounds with these stencils and these trees and just kept reusing the same um, purple tape like over and over again for all four cards because it was just simple and you can wipe this tape off and, you know, I tear it into smaller pieces, etc. Get a ton of use out of this. So I kind of go between using this and washi tape. But for things like stenciling that, I am generally um, really like this purple tape because it's wider and you have that wipe off ability with it. So after I was done sponging all of my card backgrounds, I'm going to die cut a whole bunch of pieces of brown cardstock with the Big Hugs die, also from Neat and Tangled. When I was like flipping through trying to find these stencils, I came across this die and I was like, I think I bought this and I, as usual, never used it. So I die cut it multiple times from dark brown cardstock and it die cuts into two pieces and I'm just going to stack these together with Gina K's connect glue, just using tiny little dots all along these die cuts and I'm going to stack them. So each one is three layers deep just to give it that little extra, you know, depth and depth definition. So I stack all three layers together and then you have to do that twice because like I said, it cuts into two pieces. These stack together super easy. And then I do that for all the cards. So I did a ton of die cuts, ton of stacking. Um, so I could do um, four cards all together with um, all of these images and backgrounds and die cuts and everything else. So I die cut all of these. And then I also pulled out the Maple Thanks wafer dies and stamp set. I had done a video on these 
uh, was it last year or the year before? I forget now, but I'd used these leaf dies along with another one from Neat and Tangled. And again, came across it when I was flipping through my stamps and I was like, oh, this is perfect for the, these cards. So I die cut just the outline um, die from more Nina 110 pound cardstock. And then I'm going to sponge more Distress Inks onto it. But this time I'm also pulling in some yellow and some red, which is Wild Honey and Fired Brick Distress Ink. Because Maple Leafs are generally like they turn that gorgeous shade of red. So I still wanted the green on it because I'm not making, you know, fall themed cards, but I wanted that little bit of yellow and a little bit of red in there just to, you know, give it that color. So I started with the peeled paint distress ink, and then I would add a little bit of the mowed lawn and then a little bit of the wild honey. And then I would do fire brick last because the fire brick ink, especially like that is a red, red ink. It's the most powerful out of all of them. So I like adding that one last so that it doesn't muddy up my sponges, like my yellow and my peeled paint, etc. So just working over that same um, scrap paper there and each one I did differently, just slapping on the color, not really thinking about it too much, just wanted those different shades of green and yellow and red. So went along and covered all of those leaves with that and then now I need to figure out how I want to lay everything out. So I did kind of a different layout with most of the cards. I would adhere the leaf first and I would just add dabs of that same Gina K Connect glue to the center, to the very like ends, any of the larger areas that there were, I would just add a little dab of glue, don't need to cover the whole thing. And then I'm gonna press that into place on my card base and then just stack a few acrylic blocks on it, let that sit for about a minute, glue is dry. And then I'm gonna do the same thing now with my die cut sentiment, add little dabs of the Gina K Connect glue, um, adhere that to the card base. And again, put the acrylic blocks just on top of it just to have that weight to press it down, especially over that die cut leaf. So, and let that sit again for like a minute or so just for the glue to set. And then once I had that set in place, I will either adhere one of the beavers. If it's adhered right over the sentiment, I'm going to adhere it like I show with um, the Gina K Connect glue. With the ones where the beavers are sitting above the sentiment, I actually use Simon's foam tape because it's like the perfect thickness of, basically it's the same thickness as three layers of heavyweight cardstock. So I would use foam tape on the other ones, but with these ones, I just used the connect glue and adhered that. And then with this little guy, I adhered that little bird. So he's giving him a hug. <laughs> I think this is the cutest thing ever. And again, put the acrylic blocks on top of it to let it set and adhere. So once I did that with all four cards, I now need to finish off the insides. So I pulled out my stamp platform again, and I pulled out the actual maple leaf stamp from the Maple Thanks stamp set and got that kind of centered on my card here. And then I'm going to pull off that scrap paper from the pad and I'm going to use that because I don't want to stamp these leaves um, immediately after inking them because I want my sentiment to actually stand out amongst all this color. So I'm inking up the stamps with the exact same colors that I sponged on the die cut leaves and just tapping on the ink working again kind of from lightest to darkest with that red being last. I'm going to stamp it first with that scratch paper in place, remove it, and then stamp it the second time. So I just get that lighter impression, like the second generation of stamping. And I'm going to repeat this process until I have all four card bases stamped. So really quick and easy. And because I've stamped each of these leaves twice, I don't need to clean the stamp between each use. I don't, I'm not worried about like muddying up my ink pads or anything because almost all the ink now is off the stamp and stamped onto the inside of the card because I've stamped it on the scrap paper, then stamped on the inside of the card and the stamp's practically clean. So now I can go on, ink it up again, et cetera, et cetera. So after doing all four with the leaf, I then use sentiments from the Beavers A stamp set. And this one, I chose the damn sentiment. So damn, you're a good friend. <laughs> I think it's so cute. I love punny sentiments. So stamp that on the inside of all four cards with that same blackout ink. And then as a final bit of embellishment with all of these, I'm going to pull out some of my Nouveau drops because I couldn't resist. So I've got all four cards adhered, colored, put together, stamped on the inside. So my final bit is to add my Nouveau drops. So I've got um, English mustard, red berry, and apple green. And I, like I've said in all the videos lately doing this, I do one card at a time and then I set it aside to dry and then I work on the second card so that I'm not doing, you know, all the red on one. This is the one time where I will do the whole card and then set it aside rather than doing like all the green, all the red, because I inevitably end up smearing this. 
So did one card, set it aside to dry, second card, etc., etc., until they're all done. And after I apply the Nouveau Drops, I tap it against my ink pad just to kind of smooth out those domes. It makes them look more like enamel dots, plus they dry faster when they're a little bit flatter and smooth out a bit more. So let those dry overnight and then that's going to complete these cards. And then as a final last touch, I pulled out um, some Simon Says Stamp Walnut Wood Grain Envelopes. I kind of tried to show the wood grain here on camera. It's hard to see, but it's just gorgeous and it was perfect for these cards. So now I'm going to have to order more of these envelopes. But I just thought that would make the perfect pairing with these images. So that finished off my cards for today. As always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post with links to all of the supplies used, etc. So you can check that out in the description box below the video as well as on my blog. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye. <laughs>